We are live. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to today's English class about the police. I think that's what it's about. Yeah, that's what we're talking about today. I'm excited about it. We have a lot of things to talk about today. Of course, as usual, I'll be taking questions on the topic if you like or about other things too. We'll be getting into a lot of language stuff today, but we'll also be talking about a few American culture things. So it's going to be a kind of mix of both of those. Today is August 5th, 2029. So welcome. It's good to have you. I'm glad you could join. If you're watching this live, great. If not, and you're watching it later, well, that's okay too. But you can catch the next one. Either on a Wednesday or a Friday, um, we do these, or rather I do them. Well, Kathy and I, right, Kathy? We, 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 we do these together, I think. <laughs> We're a team. Uh, give me a coffee, please. Um, we, we, I do these every Wednesday and Friday around noonish Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully going to be getting those earlier and earlier over time. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm very excited that this doesn't have a lot of green in it. And if you understand why, then you understand why. You probably understand why. I was I was a little bit concerned that I was going to disappear. But I guess not. Uh, welcome, Shabazz. Good to have you here. Uh, we're going to be talking today about law enforcement. Um, I want to clarify some terms. Just some basic terms, good old fashioned terms. And also give a few phrases for when we need help or maybe need to call the ambulance or the police. I will share a few of my own experiences as well. I have done this in the past. So maybe I'll share a few things. And I, we want to talk a little bit about um, you know, the cultural conversation around policing and uh, laws a little bit and if we have time we might get into uh, some more ancient stuff i mean, i i, I want to talk a bit about the uh code of hammurabi which i think is very interesting um if you know what that is cool i think most people have probably heard of the code of hammurabi before so that's some of the stuff we'll be talking about and i do have a couple other things planned as well if you have Questions about American culture, around vocabulary and phrases, grammar, pronunciation, whatever it may be, ask away. Word differences, I guess, if, uh, if that's what you need help with. Now's the time to ask your questions. I'll try to get to as many as I can. Also, if you look in the links in the description, you'll see that you can get a free course. If you click on the first link, I believe... Uh, no, it might not be the first one. Maybe the second one. Well, it says free course. So you can get a free course if you like. Uh, one of my courses is free. So sign up for that. Uh, and then also I'm running a special discount of my most popular course, Building Your English Brain, at a very huge, gigantic, enormous, colossal discount from the regular price. So feel free to check that out as well. Uh, this this course uh, has been taken by over 40, I think 48,000 people the last time I checked the number. 48,000 people with an average star review of 4.63 or something like that out of five. So it's a very highly reviewed course. It's one of the, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong about this, but this is what I think. I think it's one of the top language learning courses out there, period, on the internet. That's right. Uh, now, I have, you know, I have a basis for that claim, but it's kind of hard to check to make sure. But I'm pretty sure it's up there for sure. Um, so you can check out the uh, check out the link in the description if you want to, if you're interested in that. Again, make an investment in yourself, improve yourself uh, for your, you know, your, your future as an English speaker. 
right? That's what we're here for. Okay, uh, by the way, the course cover, I'll just show you what it looks like. The course cover looks like that, all right? So when you see that, you know you're in the right place. Some of you watching probably already have taken it in the past. There it is, okay? And uh, there's the full price, which you can do. You can get all the courses for a yearly membership if you like, including this one. Um, or you can do the discount thing, and that's going to give you uh, the discount code is, what the heck is the discount code? The discount code is brain food. So let's put that in and see what happens. Brain food. Boink. Hey, nice. Ooh, look at that. And you can check the check some reviews there if you like. You know, this one's kind of weird because they have a an a part of their score involves how long the course has been out and a, you know, some courses need to be updated over time, but some courses don't, honestly. Oh my God, Teacher Mike is here. What the heck? Michael Osher, legendary. A legendary English teacher teaches, uh, I believe, living in Shanghai at the moment. But wow, Mike, welcome. Great to see you. Pal, I'm in Gotham. Uh, I, uh, if you if you haven't checked out Mike's stuff before, he teaches a lot of stuff that's um, in Chinese. But for those of you who don't speak Chinese, also a lot of really good vlogs. And if you're curious about some of the stuff that's been you maybe you've heard about going on in Shanghai with the lockdowns, some really good some really good vlogs there, especially about that, and a lot of a lot of lessons that everybody can learn from not specifically chi not specifically chinese i think it's a it's a mixed bag um i've seen i've seen a lot of uh mike stuff so check check his channel out i think he's recommended on, on my channel have a good night mike thanks for popping in good to see you let me know when you're in the hudson valley hope everything's okay in shanghai um okay well Wow, we got we got we got quite a few people joining here. Chama is here from where the south the south of France, if I'm not mistaken, right? Danny, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. As I said, yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, law enforcement stuff. I'm going to, you know, try not to make it political. I just want to give a sense of what's going on in the United States a little bit uh, and give a little bit of a little bit of background first but I think we can start with more of the traditional English lesson stuff right to just sort of define define some terms so you're clear on what the heck the difference is between you know these things okay when I say these things, I mean like terms for police and you may have heard cops and you may have heard, you know, there are there are state police and there's the FBI is another thing. What What is all of this? Right. So let's just explore this a little bit. We're going to pop over here to the old the old blackboard. OK. And. Where am I? Where's my where's my thing? Where's my pen? Um, we're gonna we're gonna start with the the basic term, which is what is the difference between law enforcement and the police? And you may have also heard the justice system. What what is the difference between these things? What is one? What is another? Right and once we've get we got that cleared out of the way i think we can talk about some of the different levels like like local and sheriff and deputy and warden and all of that stuff some of the specific things okay so if you hear the term law enforcement essentially what that means is the part of the law that is not making it 
but making sure that people follow it. And that is a very big umbrella, right? But especially people who are responsible for going out and finding people who are breaking the laws. That might include the FBI. That might include the state police. That might include the game warden who's responsible for making sure people aren't breaking the law around fishing and things like that. That's all law enforcement. You may have heard of Border Patrol. This is considered law enforcement, which is part of the justice system. Okay, so I'm going to uh, write that down here. So the justice system is an even larger umbrella, and the justice system includes the courts. So the courts are, are involved in deciding, for example, who goes to jail if somebody gets caught. And uh, the, the jury in the courtroom hearing the, evi the evidence during a trial and, and making a decision that then goes to the judge to decide a sentence or, uh, or maybe they decide that this person is innocent and then they, they can go free. Regardless, this whole thing is the justice system. And then a smaller sort of branch of that would be law enforcement. And we typically think of law enforcement as the police. OK, so that's sort of just the uh, maybe the big picture, not not I don't want to get too too detailed at this point, but I'm trying to just go sort of uh, sort of top down. OK, now then you have the different let's let's call them branches of and we're going to focus specifically on law enforcement. OK, the different branches of law enforcement. Now, you've probably heard about oops, you've probably heard about the FBI. And you may or may not have heard about state and local police. So I'm going to write those down as well. We have uh, state police. And then this also may include things like highway patrol. And I'm going to I'm going to clarify each of these, but I want to just write them down. Highway patrol. And then you have a local local police, sometimes municipal police, but let's just call them local police, which may include a um, sheriff. And you may also hear the term deputy. Okay, so let's just talk through some of these things. All right, so the state police is exactly like it sounds. The United States has uh, 50 states, various territories, state police are police whose jurisdiction is the state. Jurisdiction is sort of like the territory that falls under their law enforcement, where they can go to enforce the law, where they can pull people over or arrest people or investigate something, right? Uh, this is called jurisdiction. And you may have heard uh, Batman say, I have no jurisdiction. That's right. So he can go anywhere because he's not really part of any police department exactly, kind of, maybe. So he has no jurisdiction. If you have a jurisdiction, that is your limits, sort of your border. If you're a state police officer, you are within a certain jurisdiction. Okay. And then this may include a highway patrol, which is usually focused on catching people who are uh, speeding. Uh, if you get a speeding ticket on a highway, it's that group of the police department, often state police, you'll often see them called state troopers. The individual officers may be called state troopers. And they might pull people over for speeding. They might pull people over because they suspect them of drunk driving. They might pull people over because they suspect them of having drugs. I mean, they can pull you over for any reason, but usually this is the person pulling you over. 
Okay, and it blends with these, but we'll, I just want to sort of give you a sense for this. So these state police or state troopers are on a state level that can go anywhere in the state. That's their jurisdiction. Individually, they may be called troopers or they may be called officers. So police officers, right? Um, either one of those. For the, for the ones on the highway, the highway patrol, usually, usually we would call them troopers. And then when you get to a more local level, they may still be pulling people over, but their jurisdiction is smaller. And if I'm not mistaken, their jurisdiction is sometimes on the town level or the municipal level or sometimes on the county level. So what's a county? What's the state? What's the what's the town? Well, think of it as I think sizes. You could say state is bigger than county. State is bigger than county. And then county is bigger than a township or a municipality. So think of it like that. A local police may be part of a, 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 a local town, a township, a municipality. And sometimes they may be connected to the county, which is also smaller than the state. A count counties vary in sizes but states have many many counties i live in a county called ulster county in new york state and if i cross the river then suddenly i'm in a different county called duchess county and there are police who can be in one or the other now the sheriff is it's a leadership position that is elected so the sheriff is a police officer but they're more involved in kind of administration. It's a it's a leadership position usually, and they are elected at the the county level. I think always I could be mistaken. If you go back to the cowboy days, a cowboy movie, then you would have the local sheriff. So he would be the sheriff for that little town. It's maybe possible that the sheriff could be on a town level, but. I'm pretty sure now sheriffs are elected on the on the county level. And then a deputy would be a, a lower level, which is deputy or deputy uh, deputy sheriff. That is a just a lower level of police officer. They're doing a lot of the policing, going around, checking things out, knocking on people's door. If there's a police report or if there's a traffic accident, they're doing a lot of the day to day police work. Now, what should you call them? Should you call them deputy? Should you call them trooper? Thank you very much, trooper. I appreciate the ticket. Should you call them officer? Usually what you call them, if you want to be respectful, most of the time, if you don't know what rank they are, you can just say officer. Yes, officer. No, officer. Sorry, officer. That's not mine, officer, for example. <laughs> so those are sort of the most common basic terms. Now, I did bring up then the FBI. The FBI stands for Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is also part of law enforcement, but the FBI has very different jurisdiction. We can say the FBI is kind of elite, and they do a lot more than what you would call basic policing, community policing, traffic tickets, and uh, uh, fights and drugs and things like that, you know, community policing. They're the higher level. You know, you have some people in the FBI who are doing investigation only. They're doing research. They are tracking um, maybe international criminals. They do stuff beyond the borders of, of the United States. They have people on the ground, uh, people with, you know, guns, but usually for really not extreme cases, but for very serious things. If if there's a, some sort of major drug operation going on and they need 20 people to go in and, and break it up, it's often going to be, well, it may be the FBI. And you may have seen, you know, that sort of scene in in movies, a lot of American movies before. But the FBI is much bigger than that. They have, I'm not sure exactly what their jurisdiction may be. 
if it's even beyond the United States, but it's they're they're involved in so many different things. And the head of the FBI reports directly to the president of the United States. So the president will elect, well, sorry, the president will select the head of the FBI, who is the leader of the FBI, and then they're at the same time doing all kinds of different investigations. into all kinds, everything you can imagine that's against the law, anything that you can imagine that is against the law. So do all FBI officers wear a uniform? No, you see a lot of FBI officers will wear a suit and tie. Maybe they work in an office. Uh, they, they maybe don't even have a gun. I don't know. Uh, whereas when you think of police, you think of uh, a police officer in a uniform. But you then also have a detective and maybe a warden and i'm just going to put a csi here as well so a detective could be a police officer wearing what we would call plain clothes so they would not wear a uniform and maybe they're investigating something again you often see it in movies they might have a they, they do have a badge but they might be investigating a crime maybe a murder Maybe they're investigating uh, something related to drugs, for example. And this is often the stuff that you see in movies, but they're directly connected to the local police department or maybe the state police department. You often see movies related to the NYPD. Oops, DP, NYPD. <laughs> or the, um, uh, what would be the other one? LAPD. LAPD would be New York Police Department and Los Angeles Police Department. The city police departments within their jurisdiction, the detectives probably not wearing uniforms, wearing regular clothes, plain clothes, investigating various crimes. Okay, and that's, for example, if you watch uh, a TV show called, uh, what is it called? Law and Order. Law and Order you see a lot of detectives investigating various crimes, doing an investigation. Now, what about a warden? What about a CSI? Well, I think this is clo more closely connected. So CSI would be crime scene investigation, and maybe a person who does it would be a crime scene investigator. I think those people would often potentially be, be called detectives, but you also have people who are maybe analyzing the, uh, uh, the the blood DNA from a crime scene, and they might be called a crime scene investigator, or maybe you, they might be a forensic expert. Um, they study uh, hair and things that are left behind at a, at a crime scene. Okay, now a warden usually has a uniform, but it's a different type of uniform. A warden is often connected to fish and game. And game not as in video games or fun games, but game as in animals, hunting animals. So there are rules around fishing and hunting. If you go fishing and you didn't get a fishing license, well, then you can get, get in trouble. You're probably not going to go to jail for fishing without a fishing license, but they'll give you a fine. I'm not sure what it is here. I've been thinking about going fishing recently, but I don't have a fishing license, so I would need to get that first and then go and then go fishing. Okay, sounds fun. Now, they go around and they make sure people are following the rules. In many states in the United States, we have what's called a deer season or a bow season. Various specific periods of time where you can hunt specific animals. Deer season, you're hunting deer. Now, it's actually a very useful thing because it limits the deer population and there are so many especially in the midwest and the northeast it's kind of useful to have honestly and so hunters will go out but they have to follow the rules they have to wear for example a orange on them so they don't get shot by other hunters they have to have a license for their gun they have to they can go out only during a specific window in Ohio, for example, I think it's sometime in November. 
and the game wardens will just make sure you're following the rules. I'm not sure how severe the punishments are, how, how severe they can get, but uh, as far as I know, you most people are not going to jail for breaking those kinds of laws. Maybe it's more like fines, but I could be I could be wrong about that. Now, the last thing you might be wondering, which I want to quickly talk about, is things that people call the police that may or may not be uh, polite, nice, right? So you may have heard a couple of terms. You may have heard cops. You may have heard the fuzz. And you may have heard pigs. Okay. Now, I think probably right away, you can you can see this one and say, all right, well, if someone is, is calling the police that, that's going to be uh, only a, a negative sense. When someone says that, they, they don't have happy feelings about the police they're talking about. So, you know, you don't want to say, oh, hey, hey, pig, <laughs> unless you're trying to ins insult them. And so when people want to be very critical of the police, they will use that term. The fuzz is less common when I when I hear this one. I don't think it's particularly uh, rude or disrespectful like this one is. However, it is kind of like a, we need to escape the law sort of situation. They're here to catch us. Let's get away. So you often see that in movies. When I hear the fuzz, I immediately think of in the 1970s, some guys sitting around smoking weed and the police show up and they say, ah, it's the fuzz and they run away. This is a collective, a kind of collective uncountable noun. And it 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 defines this doesn't matter if there's six or ten or two. They're here, basically, is the feeling we get from that. And then this, I would say, is more generic, generic, meaning you hear it a lot and it's kind of on the line. Uh, a police officer will say, I'm a cop. So that's not, it's not disrespectful or rude. It's just a shortened version of saying I'm a police officer. And it's kind of casual feeling. It's, it's kind of, uh, it could be considered friendly. Uh, you could say, um, I know a cop. My cousin is a cop. Are you a cop? But then you get into the territory of that being a negative thing, depending on the situation, you know, in a in a movie about criminals, they want to find which one the cop is. And when they do, they say, are you a cop? Right. Well, that's a negative thing in their story. Right. Uh, but on the other side, a police officer will say, I am a cop. So it's it's usually nothing like this one, but it could be used in a negative way in some situations. So hopefully, at least this gives you a broad sense of how we talk about law enforcement. What's the difference between that and the justice system? And where does the FBI fit in? I, I just want to give you a big picture sense because you probably see a lot of this in movies and TV shows. And it, it kind of gets gets messy. So at least that's the big picture. If you have any other questions about this, just let me know. Uh, okay, I see we have some more people joining. That's fantastic. Edder is here. Taco Taco Art. Breaking Bad. Yes. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Luba is here. Hey, everybody. Hey, Karina. Hello, Maria. Hello, Nahad. Uh, I think Teacher Mike has left. Okay. Rest well to that guy. Um, let's see. Any questions about law enforcement, the police, or anything along those lines? We're going to be talking about stuff related to this today. So, you know, this is a good time to ask questions. But if you have questions about, you know, other things, idioms, phrases, culture, American culture, pronunciation, grammar, word differences, whatever it may be, just ask. Thank you, Edder. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Of you. Okay. Taco Taco Art. That's a very cool name. I like it very much. If you guys haven't already done so, I would appreciate if you could hit the like button and subscribe. 
Um, that really helps out the channel. Uh, uh, we recently hit 100,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. Uh, but yes, please support the channel by hitting the like button and subscribing. And if you really want to support, check out my courses, which you can find in the description. One of them is free, by the way. And there's another one that's on sale right now. You can uh, check the links there. Okay. Good to see Luba here, of course, as always. Okay, if and you don't feel uncomfortable calling your husband a cop, right? Yeah, it's it's a I think it's a neutral term, and as with most neutral terms, it can go one way or the other. You can use it to be insulting, or you can use it to be respectful. It it really just depends on your intention when you say it, right? Welcome, Edder. Great to have you. Now, there is a show called Cops, which you may have heard of. And uh, it's, it's kind of a classic, honestly. You, uh, If you want to get a sense for the kinds of things that police officers do on a daily basis... I think Cops is actually not a bad show to watch. I've talked to police officers and I've asked them, hey, you know, how accurate is Cops? Well, they're real police officers doing that work. And so if you want to get a sense for kind of what it's like out there as a police officer, Cops, Cops is not a bad one. Maybe better than watching movies about police officers, which is often a little too glamorous, right? Now... With a TV show, they're going to just show the most exciting moments. So they don't show sitting in a car for four and a half hours doing nothing uh, uh, or, or, or something like that. But the stuff that they actually do, even local police, uh, you can you can see a lot of a lot of interesting stuff on cops. So let's take a quick let's take a quick look just to see if we can get a sense for. For What's he look like? Wearing a white tank top? He's a black dude. White tank top, black shorts. White tank top, black shorts. All right. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take you back up here. We're gonna talk to her and uh, figure out what's going on. Uh, we're gonna have them take a look you at. Hit it me with a remote control. I understand. Okay. And then is what? Now, how did you get the bruises? It looked like a domestic stick. violence. That right there come from a uh, her damn trying to grab me and tackle me like a football player. I mean, I ain't butt so big. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you do the math. You know what I'm saying? She bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? What the hell I'm gonna do? Let He's her calling her me. fat. Well, I mean, it, I mean, it is what it is. I'm a man. I'm gonna set my charges. This is Car just passed by me with. You hear that phrase? That's a useful phrase. It is what it is. Sort of uh, when you want to just accept the situation. It is what it is. The driver and the passengers without their seatbelt on, and also fail to maintain lane. We'll go ahead and pull them over and talk to them. Graphic stop. I thought was going on. Let me ask you a question, all right? Yes, sir. Is there anything illegal inside this vehicle? No, sir. Sorry. Nothing at all? No, sir. What about on the gentleman that's... Anything illegal inside? She's looking for drugs. Because um, he saw they weren't wearing their seatbelts. And we're changing lanes in an irregular way. It's in the car. Nothing. All right, come here. Hey, is your wife right here? Yes, sir. My partner ended up finding what appeared to be some meth in the driver's side. Meth is a, it's a drug. Got some meth under the passenger side. Really dark purple. Positive for meth. Both of them test positive for meth. Both of them drug. Okay, I found a little baggie of meth under your seat, okay? My seat? Yes. In between uh, the center console and the seat by where you were sitting. I didn't do nobody. There's nothing new with you? No, sir. All right, so how you gonna charge? You charging me with possession? Yes, sir. You charging possession is... So, the way it was... Char so getting charged means that's what they're accusing you of, uh, saying, yeah, you have this. This is what you did. You've been charged with that. Possession would be possession specifically of drugs, in this case, uh, marijuana. Let's see what's going on here. This guy has crazy eyebrows. Let's see what's going on. It belongs to me, oh, sir. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had just met her. So she's not really a friend then? Do you have a drug, a drug problem? No. Are those your real eyebrows? Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. I'm gonna ask you simple questions. Just be eyebrow? honest with me, okay? Yeah. How, how many drug deals did you do today? Only like two or three. Okay. Well, thank you for your honesty. Okay. I appreciate it. But sit tight. I'll be right back. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna ask you simple questions. Just be honest with me, okay? Do you have a drug a drug problem? Yeah. Are those no, your real eyebrows? Yes. No. While both you drug users. What the heck is going on with his eyebrows? What? Well, not hang out in our city anymore, right? No, sir. Are you gonna say no to drugs? Say, say no to drugs. That'll work. I'm sure if I'm sure this is a real commitment. Uh, raise your right hand and say we will not use. I will not use. That drugs. dude Somebody's was going out here. No, your ass going to jail. That dude. Yeah. I see you got your hair burned. Tina, Man. Was, whoa, Ooh, whoa. She's angry. You're going to jail. That's all right. I got the all money right. to get out. I'm gonna tell you what happened. You're going to jail. I've got the money to get out. This morning, okay? I don't think you want to hit people right in front of a police officer. He wasn't home to go to work. On I camera. I was like, okay, I need my truck. I come over here, I ride up some J-Lo bitch with in the back of my truck, butt naked. I pull up on the side of my truck. Okay, what I did not expect you to caught see. caught her husband some cheating. some girl butt naked in the back of my truck. Okay. 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 I didn't even, you know, you guys see it caught. I didn't lose my composure. I was like, you know what, just get out. Of my truck now, please. They're both saying that you're. Ah, uh, so she caught her husband or boyfriend cheating, and she's not happy about that. E oh, I think we got another one here. Ex uh, that reside here in Mira Loma. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and light them up and and uh, same, more talk to the driver about the cracked windshield. Oh, cracked windshield. Shut your car up. Yeah. Put your I hands on the steering wheel. <laughs> Front passenger, go. put your hands on the dash. Front passenger, put your hands on the dash. They want you to put your hands up or put them out, so they want you know. Obviously, they want they want to make sure you're not going to pull a gun out of your glove box or something like that, because it, it it happens. It definitely happens. What's going on? Not much, sir. How's it going? You have a driver's license? Uh, no, sir. Huh? No, no, sir. How come? All right, you guys sit tight. Keep your hands on the dash and on the steering wheel, all right? Don't move. Stay still. Stay still. I got paramedics coming for you. Wait, how did he get hurt? Hi, Trevor. Okay, you get the idea. The cops, eh, interesting, uh, interesting snapshot of life in America. Not to give you the impression that everything is like that, of course, but... Uh, there's a, there's a broad spectrum of behavior, and if you want to get a sense for what the police see on a fairly regular basis, pulling people over, stopping them, cops is a, a kind of pretty entertaining, <laughs> pretty entertaining TV show. I'm not sure if it's still on though. It's probably all old episodes. It was on when I was when I was growing up. Uh, I don't know if it's still going though. I would say probably not. Is cop still on? Still running. Uh, oh, in 2013, the Fox network canceled the show after 25 years. Cops eventually moved to Paramount. Paramount dropped the show in 2020. Okay, there you go. So I guess it's not running anymore. Alas, have you met police in China? Taco Taco Art says, yeah, I have met police in China, but it's very, very different. So uh, I get a sense that police in different countries are very different. And I would be curious to hear what they're like where you are. Right. So in the United States, you don't see police officers who don't have a gun. They're always kind of dressed like you see there in in cops. Um, uh, they have a gun. They often have a gun and a taser and a nightstick and a vest. Recently, they have to wear a body camera. They have to put a camera on their bodies. Um, they uh, they usually you know have a black a black uniform. Sometimes white, but usually usually it's all black. And they drive a car with a with the lights on the top and and that, that has a, a siren. And inside the car is maybe a computer for when they pull people over. They need to find their uh, information of the of the driver. 
So, uh, you know, you get a lot of cases of conflict because a lot of people in the United States have guns. Gun ownership, I think, in the United States is more than anywhere else in the world, I believe, by a huge margin. So I'm not sure what the numbers are exactly. So because there's a lot of violent crime, you have then police who are always armed because they often come up against situations where they need to use their guns. And sometimes when they don't need to use their guns, but they do it anyway. I'm sure you're aware of those kinds of stories, um, right? So uh, abuse of, uh, uh, of violence, police, police violence, um, and maybe someone getting killed who was not armed and was no threat, but the police still shoot them. That's a big sort of uh, debate that happens in America right now. What, what do you do to prevent that? One of the things that they did was they started using body cameras. So the camera is always recording, but it, it still happens. And um, I think what, what people in particular get in particular get really upset about is that um, they often don't get prosecuted. Many of the police officers who do that, um, and of course it's a minority of police officers, but many of the police officers who do that, um, uh, they, they may not go to jail for doing it. So at least that happened in the past. It's kind of changing now where um, there's more uh, serious consequences for misusing uh, lethal lethal force or shoot, shooting someone who's, for example, clearly unarmed. Um, but that really, the conversation started with a few people being 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 shot, um, particular particularly black people, and um, by by police, by white police officers. And so a lot of protests started up. And then the George Floyd thing happened. And that completely opened the conversation. Um, uh, there were a lot of protests in, I think, 2020. Um, and uh, there's also a movement called Defund the Police, which wants to completely get rid of uh, the police force, as far as I know. So interesting stuff but i've seen in other countries for example I, I, in china you know you rarely see someone with a gun the only time i ever saw anybody with a gun was people who are guarding a bank truck a truck that's going to the bank to either take cash or bring cash and uh they have a very crude looking shotgun it honestly doesn't look like it could do that much damage but most police officers driving around, uh, they might they might have a nightstick or uh, or not, and they they're sort of just um, community community helpers. And if they have a a serious thing that happens, you know, a violent crime, for example, there are squads of people with guns who can go in and deal with that situation. But that's I think that's more like the FBI. They have kind of a SWAT team division that's responsible for that and uh, it's not the everyday police walking around on the street whereas here in the united states it is the everyday police walking around on the street who have uh, who have guns not security guards though um luba says my husband works at computers so he doesn't wear a gun and a uniform but Lou, I'm curious, does the average police officer who walks on the street, just the average sort of uh, cop on the beat, do they, uh, do they carry weapons all the time? Or do most police officers not carry weapons in Russia? I'm curious. Curious about that. All right, if we don't have any questions on that or anything else, again, guys, if you have questions on pronunciation or culture or idioms, phrases, grammar, word differences, whatever it may be, feel free to ask and uh, hit the like button and subscribe, of course, if you want to support the, support the channel. Uh, okay, I do want to go over another set of phrases uh, for law enforcement. I don't know if you're getting tired of the topic, but I want to I want to stick on the topic and then talk a little bit about laws too. No, they don't. Interesting. I've heard also I've heard in the UK 
Uh, they also don't do that. They don't have. They don't all have guns, or many of them don't, or some do and some don't. I I feel like it's a mix. Draconian. Is that your question? Bowie, do you want to know what draconian means? All right. Um, hold on a second. I'm just pulling up my blackboard for the next thing I want to talk about. Okay. I've called the police. Well, let's say it like this. I've called 911 three times in my life. And for one, it was the police. For one, it was the ambulance. And for one, it was the fire department. I can't remember actually if I called the fire department or someone else did now it's been a while but i was stuck in an elevator so the fire department had to come and break it open to save us actually i think i have a video about that so i want to talk about the phrases that we might use when we need this kind of help something is urgent right and the different the different levels because some things are very urgent sometimes we just need need help sometimes we want to report something right I want to talk about the different phrases we use and also kind of share my uh, some of my experiences in particular with the ambulance and the the police okay so how do we say this uh, if we want to just report someone and we need the police to come but it's not like a shooting is happening or a robbery it's just the police should come now i'm going to call 911 and maybe it's because your neighbors are being noisy, right? Maybe it's as simple as that. You call you call nine one one for that. What what do we say? How do we describe that, right? So let's just go over a couple of simple phrases, and then we'll get into some of the more urgent stuff. Starting with the basics, right? Nine one one is the number in the United States that you call when you need help fairly urgently or very urgently from either the, the police department or the fire department or uh, maybe you need medical help you need an ambulance and what you're calling when you call 911 is is a dispatcher this is the person responsible for deciding where your call goes to the police station or to to call an ambulance for example okay but let's say there's a a, a, a lady named Karen and she doesn't like noise and her neighbors are having a noisy party at two in the morning okay so we would say she called the and then here you could say cops or police police is more formal cops is more casual she either one is okay on her neighbors okay neighbors she called the police or cops on them now, could we say she called the fire department on them? She called the uh, ambulance on them? No, no, no. This is just for reporting something or letting the police know that they need to come and th their attention is, is required, basically. Now, is this extremely urgent? Probably not. You could, you could instead of calling 911, call the police station directly. But if you just call 911, it's a non-emergency situation. I think it's also fairly okay and pretty common, um, but you might you might in that sort of situation not call nine one one and instead just call the uh, the police station. Now this would be a filing a police report. or reporting an incident or crime, okay? 
Now, filing a police report would be definitely and usually a non, I believe almost always a non-emergency situation. This is something happened that the, needs the police to pay attention to it or the police need to know about. And I'm letting the police know whether I call 911 or I or I call the police station directly filing a police report. This often happens uh, after a traffic accident. So I got in an accident once and it wasn't my fault. Someone hit me at an intersection and the someone else called the police. The police came and I had to file a police report. I had to tell the police what happened and they had to come and they had to check the damage to my car all of that stuff. This is when I was in high school, this happened. And so it was not urgent in particular because I wasn't hurt or anything, right? Nothing bad had happened to anybody, but this needed to happen. So this is usually for non-emergency situations. Now, this could be either one, but this is when you see something else to report an incident or crime. Incident makes it seem like it's less urgent, right? Incident often means that you're not even sure it is a crime, but it's something that the police should come and check out. And then a crime is when you absolutely see something. You see somebody get robbed. You see someone uh, smash a window and steal jewelry. Uh, you know, this sort of thing is a, is a crime. And if you witness that, if you see that happen, right, if you witness a crime, then you might report that crime. So report would be the perfect word for that sort of situation. Now, I, I one time had to, to do this. I was in my apartment building. Well, I was in my apartment in a building, and we heard, sometimes we heard the neighbors fighting, but we heard one night, help, help, help. And this was after we had heard a lot of shouting from the apartment, then we heard help, help, help. I ran out of my apartment into the hallway. The neighbor had done the same. And there were three apartments on this uh, on this floor. And we both ran out and went to the door and listened. And there was more yelling. So we, so I called 911. And I said, I need to report an incident. I think the police should come out right away. They asked then the information. What's the address? Which the, the apartment number? So I had to do that. Uh, and it turned out to be not actually that serious, but there was yelling. I don't believe there was any actual uh, domestic violence. But I, what I said was I would like to report an incident because I wasn't sure if what was happening was actually serious or what. And, you know, you want to be safe. So the police came. I think six or seven police cars came and they knocked on the apartment the apartment door, and I don't know exactly what happened after that. Now, you could also say to witness an accident, and that's when you've seen something, and usually it's when someone's hurt and you need the ambulance. So one time I was driving down a country road, and I saw a car flipped upside down beside the road, just sitting there. There's the car. And I thought, well, the ambulances aren't, where are the ambulances? There sh they should be here. And then I thought, maybe I'm the first person to see this. Maybe this hasn't been reported yet. So I, uh, I called 911 again and I said, I have witnessed an accident. Or maybe I said, because it was a long time ago, maybe I said I would like to report an accident. Either way, should be okay. Then they asked me again the information. What's the address? I told them the intersection of the two roads where I saw it. Uh, and they said, oh, that has already been reported. So actually, I wasn't the first person to report it. The paramedics, the ambulances, the police cars, they were already on the way. They just hadn't arrived yet. And they came and I think the person was ended up being uh, fine. But the car was the car was upside down now. There are other ways to say this, right? If you want to be specific, when you call, you could say, I need an ambulance at, and then say the address. And that would be when, you know, you, you, you are having an allergic reaction or some, something's going on. You 
of a medical emergency and you just say, I need an ambulance at this address quickly. And then they might ask you a few more details, but they're going to dispatch the ambulance to that place. Now, sometimes you just say what's happening. You call 911. It's so urgent. You don't have time for any of these phrases. You just say what's going on. There's a, uh, there's, there's a knife fight. Uh, there's a knife fight happening at this address. There's a knife fight happening on the street in front of this building at this address or on the corner of these two streets. I'm watching it right now. Ah, and I call while it's happening. So you just say what's going on, right? Or, or maybe, uh, you know, everything I touch is turning to gold. Please send an, ambu an ambulance. Uh, if, if everything you touch turns to gold, including your food, you know, that's, a, that's definitely an urgent, an urgent situation. You wouldn't want to have the Midas touch. Unless you could choose which things to not turn to gold, that would be useful. A lot of those, uh, a lot of those old myths, they are absolute. You know, they never give you uh, sort of rules to say, Okay, I want everything that I want to turn to gold to turn to gold, but there are things that I don't want to turn to gold, like myself or people I know or the food I'm going to eat. But, I, you know, I want to turn that sofa to gold, of course. That's not an emergency. Anyway, those are the common phrases that you need to report a crime, report an incident, let the authorities know that something is going on, that somebody needs help. Those are not the only ones that you can use. The simplest thing to do is just say, this is happening. And then the person that you call, the dispatcher who answers the phone when you dial 911 will know what to do. If there's a knife fight, they're, they're going to send the police and the ambulance. It's not up to you to decide, right? So maybe the simplest thing to do is to say, there's this happening, unless it's not that urgent, in which case you would say, I want to report an incident or report an accident, or report a crime. Probably the most common one. All right. Greetings, hello, pipe89, and face face. The most difficult verb in English is to set. Can you give some uses of this verb? Yeah, that's a good one. I like it. What uh, defines the situation as a non-emergency in previous examples is the preposition on. Um, let me think about that one for a second. On. Um, yes, we'll call the police on someone would be probably a non-emergency. But that would be specifically for that phrase, call the cops or police on them, right? But that would be a description of what someone did. She called the police on them rather than yeah yeah uh okay so we've got a question here from we've got a question here from face face the most difficult verb in english is to set can you give us an example yeah sure and i think you know i'm gonna i'm gonna enlist the aid of my favorite dictionary the free dictionary because just because it will think of more examples than i can in the moment but i can add add some commentary uh, to the ones we find. So, um, you know, uh, it's not that uh, I don't know what it means. I, I do. Um, it's just that, so don't, you know, I don't, don't want to give the impression that I actually don't know what set means. I'm just trying to uh, think of, thinking of examples off the top of my head that in, immediately express every possible meaning of set is a tall order difficult to accomplish that's the kind of topic that you would want to plan for and spend an hour writing down examples and thinking about it that's the kind of thing i do in my courses for example and so i'm going to use the free dictionary here as a sort of a helper so that we can explore this um, uh, interesting question and very interesting word all right so Face, face, says the most difficult verb in English is to set. That may be true. Maybe, maybe not. Can you give us some uses of this verb? Let's then hop over to our classic, thefreedictionary.com, my favorite dictionary website of all time. They don't pay me to say it, but they should. 
Okay, so we're going to skip the first one in mythology because that's just more the pronunciation of a very naughty Egyptian god guy, brother of uh, Osiris, I believe. Naughty, naughty. And we're going to go right to the verbs because that's where all the action is, right? Should you sit down or should you set down? Did you set something down? Or did you sit something down? Ugh, confusing, eh? Uh, what about a set of this? And can I do that? Ugh. All right, so let's explore it as a verb, and then we might also cover a couple of noun ways to use it as a noun as well. Okay? So to put in a specific position or arrangement, set a book on a table, set the photo next to the flowers. Okay? To set something down is typically to place it from not on the ground or not on a surface to a surface. Now this one, specific position or arrangement would be if you're decorating, right? Set it right over there. You would use it when you want to make sure the position is right. Where should we set, where should we set this chair? Should we set it over here by the fireplace or over by the TV? I think we should set it by the TV because that's I think that's a nicer for our, our feng shui is better in that sort of situation. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So that's a common way to use it, but also very simply can just mean to be not on a flat surface and then to be on a flat surface, to be in the air, for example, then to, to, to be placed down on a table or on the floor. And I believe that would be, uh, uh, is that this one? No. Uh, let's see if they have if they have that one as a separate one, uh, or if they're just including it in the first. Maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, maybe they're just going with. Maybe they're just going with uh, with number two here to put into a specific state to cause to begin to an action to cause or assign to incite hostile feelings. Um, oh, actually, no, I guess it would be probably the first one. But often just set it down. Set it down is uh, really, really common. Okay. To put into a specific state, set the prisoner at liberty. Set the house ablaze. To cause to begin, the noise set the dog to barking. Uh, the sergeant set the recruit to sweeping. Okay. Now, set to doing something is, I think, less and less common, but... Saying something like setting about or set about, just set about your work, for example, would be very common. I, I set to working on the homework is okay to begin to do something. But again, that phrasing specifically is less common because we would just use the verb directly more often. I began to work on the homework, right? The prisoner, uh, set the prisoner at liberty, free the prisoner, set the house ablaze, Light the house on fire. Set the machine in motion. Turn the machine on. Set the machine in motion. Set the universe in motion. Maybe that would be a little bit, a little bit more common. Okay. To, to position oneself so as to be ready to do something such as starting a race. Okay. Ready, set, go, for example. To put into a stable or fixed position. Uh, the, to position or secure, blah, 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 set the fence post in the cement. Set an emerald in a pendant. Uh, the tiara was set with diamonds. Set the table. Set a place at the table. To set a place at the table is kind of connected to that arrange example of arranging something. To set the table is to put the plates there and the forks and the knives and the cups and all of, all of those things in the right place before you eat, right? To set an alarm would be before you go to bed. You put it there. It's in place. To set a broken arm. Your arm is broken. You put the bones where they should be. That's putting things in the right place where they are supposed to be. And again, which one does set it on the table mean? Um, eh, it's it's hard to say if it's this one or if it's the first one. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, and I'm kind of surprised they don't have a specific example here. But uh, yeah. You also will hear people, by the way, say, sit that down. Sit it down over there, but it should be set. Okay, um, to concentrate or direct, for example, to propose a deal, to direct or focus one's desires or hopes, 
to set your eye on something, to set a goal, to set your mind to doing something, you fix it in place, for example. That would be a really good one. I think here, set the table, set an alarm, and set a broken arm, these are particularly common, right? Um, maybe to set some rules, to set a list of rules before we do something, let's all follow these rules. Then we can begin. That would be a really common one too. Okay, uh, let's see. Sports, usually with the fingertips. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. Compose music to, to fit a given text. No, not particularly common. To a point, establish or determine. To demonstrate, a parent must set a good example. Uh, set the meeting for Friday afternoon. That one, I, I, I almost feel like that one doesn't need to be separate from number uh, five because it's so close. Set an alarm for seven and to set the meeting for Friday afternoon. It's so close in actual meaning, right? Uh, this one is not particularly common. Set a great deal by, uh, 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 to set a great deal by nutrition, to uh, set a high value on human life. I think there, I feel like um, place is replacing set for this specific usage, right? Uh, to value something highly, to make an estimate of worth, place is more common, I believe. Okay, uh, let's see. To be appear below the horizon, the setting sun, the sunset, to diminish or recline, um, that would be when the glory of the empire set, the same actual uh, definition as the setting sun, just sort of used in a different way. Uh, fixed or established by agreement, a set time for launching. Again, that's connected back to our other one. Uh, to set something, to put it in place, right? Uh, to arrange it, but just used in the adjective form. And then I want to mention one or two nouns here. Permanent forming, so carried, blah, the manner for which something is positioned. The set of her cap, not very common, but the one I'm not seeing here, hmm. and which place a I'm not seeing one that I wanted to mention is that would be a, a set of things as in a grouping of things, a specific grouping of things that belong together, action figures and uh, two chairs that were made together that should be there. These are made as a set. These are a set. I don't want to separate them because they are a set. They're a specific group of things that belong together. And I'm not seeing it here. Uh, the noun forms here. And condition of permanent firming, hardening, okay, to concrete set, yeah, yeah. Below the horizon, direction of water, uh, seeding, action of arranging a hair, uh, arranging hair, sports, Texas Hold'em. I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Have I missed it? Huh. Now, where it gets really crazy is when you get into all of these phrasal verbs. Set about, set apart, set aside set back, set by, set down, set forth, set forward, set in, set off. All of these are fairly common. Set to, set set to, maybe less. Set up, set upon. Idiom, set against, set... F so these, of course, we can't go through all of these, but these are all fairly common. A couple of these stick out as not particularly common, like set to, as I mentioned, that one feels kind of, kind of dated to me, kind of uh, getting a little bit out of date, but... There's just so much here that really, if we wanted to go in depth, we could spend an hour talking about the connotations of each. What I like to do is just browse through them and uh, and kind of write down my own examples. And uh, oh, here we go. A group of things of the same kind that belong together and are you and are so used. A chess set. Uh, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. Hooray. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Set, to put or place in position or into a specified state or condition. To set a book on the... Hey, isn't that the example that I gave on my own? That's exactly what I said. To set a book on the table. 
Uh, oh, to set a book on the table. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, so here I feel like the definition is a little bit, not off, but it, it could be misleading because my first, the first one I gave was to just put down on, onto the ground, right? So if we say, for example, if we say, for example, set uh, to put or place in position or into a specified state or condition to set a book on the table, I mean, that's basically just there put it on the table it, it 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 doesn't matter where you put it sometimes yeah for decoration you would set it over here or set it over there set the chair by the fireplace set it by the tv right that's kind of making sure it's right there but uh, just set it on the table set it on the table just put it down on the table and it doesn't matter where so i don't want you to get the idea that this main meaning of set always has to be a specific arrangement or position and that's where i feel like this definition could potentially be misleading anyway so interesting a word with so many different possible meanings and uses you could you could spend hours looking at through looking through this this page just by itself it's amazing how many ways we use this word and other really common words like lay and lie and light and, so, and uh, charge. So many words have so many different uses. Use, uses. And I think it's fascinating. So I know probably face face. I didn't answer your question, but I at least we have a sense for the scope of the word and how big it is. We need a two-hour course on this word by itself. If we're really going to answer your question, uh, you know, if you want me to explain that, I need to take uh, two weeks to write a course about this word, and then I need to record it for another week, and then I need to f make sure it, it looks good, and then it's going to take me at least a month to make a course just on one word. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but now we know the scope of it. So hopefully that kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of answers your question. Uh, let's see if we've missed anything here. Yo. Okay. Um, let's see. You may have heard recently, there was, at least recently when I'm speaking, there was a horrible school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, where someone with a an automatic weapon went into a school and killed, I believe it was 21 people. And the question that everyone wanted to know was, why didn't the police go in? So what's the role of the police? To protect people, to keep them safe. In America, people have guns. And so sometimes crazy people get those guns and they do crazy things. School shootings are becoming more and more common. And sometimes the police stop them very quickly. In the case of Uvalde, Texas, that shooting, not quickly. In fact, not at all. It's pretty crazy the details that are coming out about this. And it seems to be an issue with leadership, a management problem. It's easy to say, Oh, well, they didn't go in because they're cowardly. Maybe that's part of it. But also, when you have police and they're not well organized, then this kind of thing can happen. So let's just take a look at some of the footage from what happened. There was an active shooter in this school going around from classroom to classroom, killing children and teachers. And a bunch of police arrived very soon after the shooting started and didn't go in. 
they had huge guns. The police had huge guns and shields and vests and well protected. How they didn't go in? Well, they went in a little bit and then they went back out. And it's crazy. And there's a lot of criticism happening that has happened and will probably continue to happen as more details come out about this particular shooting around what the heck prevented them from going into the school. So let's take a quick look at uh, this is just uh, 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 an introduction of some of the footage from that was released from the, the shooting from the police. OK, so you won't actually see anything. Uh, violent here, so don't worry about that. Speed, Marcelina Benito in studio, diving into the body camera footage. Marcelina. Well, Lennon, body, the new body cam one video released Sunday afternoon bodies, takes us the inside the Uvalde police response that day through the eyes of seven different officers. Much like the 77 minute hallway video we showed you last week, this footage captures chaos, confusion, and a clear lack of command. Oh, okay, you didn't have to do the alliteration there, friend. Get inside. Go, go, go. So they're Yvelde saying PD responded no, go into to the Rob building. Elementary this in minutes the after the gunman entered the school. Officer Coronado rushed inside the hallway on the south side so quickly you could still see a dust cloud from the early rounds of gunfire. Hey, we're going in or we're staying here? What are we doing? As more officers pulled up outside, confusion about how said, are we going in or are we staying here? What are we doing? How to proceed. This is right after the first guns. Officers rushed towards the building. This picked up on Justin Mendoza's body cam. This building right here, brother, this building. We got it. We got it. We got it. Those officers never did, but at the same time on the so they're saying they have to get in and eliminate the threat. That means eliminate what the the shooter. There's one shooter in the school going around shooting people. And you can see they're going in, but they're kind of not going in. They're half going in and then going back out. It's crazy. The other side of the building. Hallway video shows officers who rush towards room 111 and 112, only to retreat. Am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Am I bleeding? Yeah, yeah. Police officer whose job it is to protect children. You, you might be bleeding a little bit. I see a tiny little drop of blood there on your finger. Oh, you poor baby. I mean, I, who, who do you... Uh, it's easy to blame one person or it's it's crazy situation as soon as they took fire it's they're getting shot at and as soon as they get shot at they just run away rather than going forward uh you know if you're a police officer and your job is to carry a gun part of that involves taking on the risk because students in the school don't have guns so your job as a police officer in this kind of situation is to put your life in danger potentially die, that's the risk you take, in order to protect citizens, including children. It's clear the officers knew they needed to go back, but they didn't. Dude, we gotta get in there. Yeah. The the we gotta get in there, he keeps shooting. On the south side of the building, questions begin about who's in charge. Wait, right. chief is in there, chief's in charge right now. Gotta get in there, gotta go. Am I bleeding? <laughs> now hold on. Other heavily armed officers seem confused about the strategy. What are we doing here? Just before noon, That's not a good sentence you want to hear. What are we doing here? I don't think this one is a particularly... Because uh, the another thing is the police issue in America is very political. There's the defund the police side. They want to completely get rid of the police. And then there's the side who they are... They love the police. The police are the greatest, the greatest uh, thing in America. And you're anti-American if you criticize the police. I don't think this one is very political. Anybody who watches this, most people who watch this say basically, yeah, big, uh, big fail here. Terrible. 30 minutes after police arrived, rescues begin out the windows. Hurry, 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 guys, hurry. Students rush to safety. Meanwhile, UCISD police chief. Hanging out, probably watching TikTok. That guy's watching, this guy's watching TikTok. Pete Arredondo remained in the hallway outside 111 and 112. Well, seen can I get a large phone, pizza? He left yes. his police radios outside. He's also seen fumbling with keys, unable to find the right one to unlock a door. And at one point, heard trying to talk to the shooter around 1221 after another spray of gunfire. Can you hear me, sir? No response. Run Yet in with still your gun. No breach sir. for another 30 minutes. 30 minutes. After officers hear those final gunshots around 1221 p.m., Another officer's body camera captures someone shouting, quote, 
were making entry. You see them move closer, but for some reason that continues to baffle so many, they stop short of breaching that classroom. So they never actually run in. That's the situation. Um, let's just quickly check out one more. The, the situation is that, you know, they're supposed to be going in. And for some reason, they just keep not doing it for a combination of reasons, apparently. Yeah, from inside, Rob Elementary is going viral, and its subject has already endured intense scrutiny. Body camera footage shows officers holding, holding back UCISD policeman Ruben Ruiz just moments after his wife, teacher Eva Mireles, told him she'd been shot. We won't show you any violence, but we do want to warn you, this video is hard to watch. Here's Ken's Five reporter, Matt Houston. UCISD PD officer Ruben Ruiz video. was among the first lawmen to enter Rob Elementary, arriving just three minutes after shooting began. Social media users slammed the four-year department vet for checking his phone seconds later. They didn't yet know this. My wife's classroom. Oh, his wife. Teacher. So he's, yeah, his wife is in there. She's one of the teachers. Eva Morales taught in room 112, likely the second class the shooter entered. And from the hallway, Ruiz heard gunshots. <laughs> During the 15 minutes that followed, a number of cameras caught glimpses of Ruiz, probably trying to reach his wife. He moved in and out of the building until this. <laughs> Ruben, 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 Ruben. She said she's shot, Johnny. Thousands of people have now watched that encounter on social media. DPS says officers took Ruiz's gun and got him away from the building. His plea was perhaps the earliest indication that victims were alive with the shooter in a classroom. It wasn't the last. Well, the victims, child called 911. The room is full of victims. They're bringing gas in the room. We've got victims in there. Victims in the room with us? Child on the phone, multiple victims. The child just called if they have victims in there. We called 911. It's just crazy that they're all just sitting around on the phone with so many guns. It's, it's, it's just so insane. And uh, they're holding that guy back. But if your wife was in the room and they just, it's not like they're holding him back, holding him back. They just kind of put their hand on his shoulder and say, no, no, no. And he stops and turns around. I, it's such a weird situation. And it's one of those things that's kind of unique to, it's unique to the United States. Not that there are not shootings in other places, but in the United States, the, the ease of getting a gun is kind of unbelievable. Anybody can get any kind of gun that they want. And so normally what you expect is, all right, well, when things go wrong, at least we have a bunch of police with guns to stop it. But obviously that is not always the case. And this is a huge debate in the United States about how to deal with this issue what do you do with the police? Why did this happen specifically? Why didn't they go into the school to stop the shooter? And why did they hang around for 30 minutes and, and do nothing? What is going on? Why did the shooter have a gun? All of these, all of these questions, it's, it's very hard to answer them. And when it gets into politics, it gets even more complicated because you have, for example, uh, the NRA, which is a has a lot of money and prevents a lot of discussion around what to do with with guns like background checks and things like that it's hard to change the rules it's hard to change the laws the second amendment of the united states constitution gives the right to own guns so it's not something that's going to change but there are a lot of different sides who uh, have very different views on it, and uh, if you're if you're interested in it, I would start with maybe start with the NRA and look into that. That's a very interesting one, and then get into the political sides and get a sense for how how you feel about it. I have my own opinions, which I don't really want to get into. I just wanted to sort of give a. I think this story in particular is a good way to get a sense for what's going on and and uh i think it this this brings in specifically the police issue and also the ease of getting 
uh, very powerful weapons issue. And a lot of people here in the United States don't realize that in most of the world, it's not like this. In most of the world, you can't just go <laughs> buy a gun at Walmart. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting. Uh, we this is I live in a I live in a unique country in a lot of ways. Uh, hard life. So I see that you've been asking if I can be your tutor. So I do not do any one to one classes except I've done a couple. Uh, for live streams, right? So I'm sorry, I cannot. So if you want, you can probably search on italki or or um, Cambly or Preply or something like that, and you can find a teacher. I make courses instead. So what I do is I, of course, I do things like this and make videos, but I also make courses. Um, right now, if you want, you can get a free course a free course. These are courses you can take in your free time to improve your English. Um, uh, there's a free one you can take. It's only an hour long, so it's short, but it's a free course. And you can check that out in the links in the description. But also, I'm doing a limited time sale on my most popular course, which is Building Your English Brain. This course has been taken by well over 40,000 people, I believe around 48 thousand people something like that maybe maybe even more than that and uh, the average reviews on this course are around uh, 4.6 above 4.6 stars out of five so it's a very highly rated course uh, taken by a lot of people and and uh, I'm doing a discount on it right now so if you want to go to the one of the links in the description, um, you'll you'll see this. This is the the course, um, and if you uh, click on if you click on buy now, um, you can put in the discount code. The code you can click on the link directly to go here, or you can click on the code. Uh, what the heck is the code? What is the code? I forget the code. Hold on, let me check the code. What's the code? Oh, brain food. Right, 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 right. Brain food. B R A I N F O O D. And then yoink. And then there you go. Okay. Very reasonable price if you're investing in your future, in your future English development. This is a great course to start with. I have many more courses. If you want access to all my courses, you can sign up for a yearly membership. Uh, and uh, that will give you unlimited access to the courses. You get a one-on-one -on -one level evaluation with me and also access to the Cloud English community. So feel free to check that out too. But if you want to start somewhere, I would start with I would start with this one. This is a this is a really good place to start. And it's uh, you know it's a three hour course, and I'll be with you there along the way. If you have questions, if you need help. For example, on WhatsApp, I, I'm happy to, to do so. So check that out, link in the description, and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let's see if I've missed anything. What is the common name for your course? It's called Building Your English Brain. That's what it's called. Okay. Are social media apps good for learning English? Like fake Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? I, I would say, uh, Mahmoud, uh, you know, yes if you want to sort of absorb culture and language casually, sure, yes. But if you want to do serious learning, probably not. There are different levels, right? I listen to courses when I want to learn stuff more seriously, or I'll, I'll research stuff if I want to learn more seriously. Uh, but if I want to sort of casually just absorb, thing, absorb things, I might listen to a podcast or listen to an audiobook. I'm not doing very serious, dedicated learning. So there are different types of learning, and they're both useful for different things, right? If you want to improve more quickly, generally you want to do the more intensive style, an online course or something like that. If you want to learn more sort of casually and get a few things here and there and have a bit of a background, especially understanding 
uh, natural conversation and things like that. Well, that's what my, you know, that's why I do these live streams. That's why I post videos. It's not often super, super, super focused. Sometimes it is, but sometimes not. It's kind of more laid back. And, you know, podcasts, if you find a podcast you like, listen to that. TikTok is okay, but it's so short form. I wonder if you could really benefit a lot from constantly swiping to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. I feel like social media is kind of just a, a, a big mess of too much content and who knows what's good and what's not. I would more recommend if you want to consume stuff, find a podcast you like and follow that podcast. It's long form conversations. You get to know the host or the people on the podcast. I have ones I listen to that I really enjoy. That's because I enjoy listening to those people. I like those people, right? So find a podcast you like or some YouTube creators you like and follow a few people. That way you're kind of controlling your input. It's sort of like when you choose your diet, right? You don't just say, whatever, bring it to my mouth and I'll put it in, whether it's French fries or hamburgers or, you know, the worst junk food you can imagine mixed in with the healthy stuff, right? That's kind of what TikTok is. It's all of everything it's a, it's a little bit of everything all of the time. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, that's almost a definition of TikTok. Uh, that's Bo, Bo Burnham's song. Uh, is that what it's called? Welcome to the Internet is a song by Bo Burnham, which I think describes what, what modern social media is, especially TikTok. And I like TikTok. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know if it's good for a healthy consumption. I would more recommend... You go long form, find creators you like, and then use that as your window into the language, right? As long as you have a window into the language, whether it's me or others, that's great. That I think that's generally, uh, that's generally better. That's what I do personally. I'm the only platform I'm on is it. Honestly, I I'm just on YouTube. I'm on YouTube and then I make courses and that's all I do. I don't have a TikTok account except when I'm watching TikTok. I but I don't I don't create TikToks. Um, I decided not to for several reasons. Um, the classic tongue twister to sound like a native speaker would probably be Peter Piper. That's the most famous one. Hard Life says, please tell me the best tongue twister so that I can sound like a native speaker. There are a lot of assumptions built into that, that question uh, or that, that, that request. Uh, one is that tongue twisters are the way to sound like a native speaker, and they're not. <laughs> That's the first thing. So, yes, tongue twisters can help as part of your sort of a pronunciation exercise. Uh, you can... You can practice your tongue and doing different English sounds with tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are not the end all be all of pronunciation practice. 100% not. Absolutely. You have to do much more comprehensive, broader learning if you want to really sound natural. You have to cover much more than just tongue twisters. That said, probably if since you asked the question, the most famous tongue twist tongue twister tongue twister is is peter piper uh so i'll just pull that up so you can see it but i want to be very clear what i'm saying is this is not a magical solution for sounding like a native speaker i'm just sharing you probably the one that most native english speaker uh most they've made that most native english speakers know right um let's just pull it up here here we go. This is just in the Google in Google results. Okay. I'll zoom in here. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, now this is where it changes from what I know. Where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? What I learned is how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? So then you try that with... Uh, uh, making sure that you've got it correctly, a little more speed. So the idea is you don't want to just do it faster badly because then you're building bad habits. So you want to stay away from that. You want to build good habits. So you say it slowly, making sure you've got all the sounds exactly perfect correctly. 
then you speed it up, but you never sacrifice how accurate it is. Because if you start doing it poorly, you're actually doing damage. You're getting worse and you're building the wrong habits. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, a peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper How many people, how many, how many, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? How many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? Right, so is that useful? Okay, yes, to master the sounds and get really good at that. But again, I wouldn't say, oh, just do this a thousand times and your English is going to be great. No, definitely not. That's not how it works. But I'm also not saying don't practice tongue twisters. I would recommend finding a long list of tongue twisters and picking ones that particularly highlight pronunciation sounds that you struggle with, whether that's TH or L and N or R or whatever. If you find a few of those, oh, these have sounds that are hard for me, then practice those. You can make a lot of progress. Tongue twisters can be very useful tools if you know how to use them. I would say the key is that you find the ones that have the sounds that you struggle with, then you make sure you go slowly at first. Make sure when you say that tongue twister, it's perfect. You've got the sounds down 100%. It sounds right. Then you slowly increase the speed over time. Again, if you're just saying fast tongue twisters and the sounds are all wrong, you're just wasting all your time. So. The key is increase speed slowly, and then you'll get that muscle memory down in your mouth. Uh, Oscar is here. Do you speak another language? Uh, I lived in China for a while, and so I picked up, um, I don't know how much to say, uh, fluent in Chinese? No, I would say. I, I learned Chinese kind of naturally over time just uh, conversationally and you know if you ask me to talk about politics or very complicated things I, I I couldn't do it I couldn't do it but what is swear words I know the meaning I swear to God okay that's different though I swear to God is a promise so the confusion there is uh, yeah this question. Please don't show us anything on your computer. We want to learn English vocabulary and phrases. Well, you're speaking for everybody, Mahmoud. That's an interesting, uh, interesting thing to do. Well, I got to say, Mahmoud, um, you know, if you don't like it, you're welcome to uh, skip. I, I, you're, you have your preferences, and I, I appreciate that, and I respect that you have your preferences. But I have my preferences, too, right? And I, I think that it's important to give more context than to just go through and talk about phrases, 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 phrases. I like to have a more well-rounded approach to a broad topic. And, you know, I know that there are a lot of teachers out there who just say, okay, here are the words, here are the phrases, bye-bye. I, I really don't think that's that's giving the whole picture. And so I like to kind of sh maybe show a video or give some cultural context, a little background, someone else's point of view. Uh, I'm sorry if you, if you don't like that part of it, but uh, um, I, I believe that it's it's sort of a more comprehensive way to do it. And, um, you know, there are a lot of other YouTube channels out there. Make your choice. Do you know AJ Hoge? Hoge? I don't know AJ Hoge. Hoga, Hoga, Haga. See, there you go. Taco Taco Art says, I like watching your video because I can learn about American culture. So that's kind of how I feel about it. You know, you get, if you just learn phrases, you're getting a little window into the language, but language is culture. So if we're talking about the police and I give you five phrases to, you know, when you need to report an emergency, which we did. And I talked about the, the words about different types of police. Okay, great. But if you know that in context to, the, oh, this thing that happened in Uvalde, Texas, and the and we watch a news report, I feel that you're getting a bigger picture there. I really do. I feel very strongly about that. Uh, because language is culture. And culture 
and language are connected together. And culture is also connected to current events and things that people talk about and share. Like if I actually speak to you how I would talk to my a family member or a close friend, an American, fellow American family member or close friend, you might think, why do I understand you now, Luke? But I don't understand a lot of maybe native English speakers. Well, it's because there are a lot of cultural references. It's not just words and phrases. It's a lot of cultural references that people make that other native English speakers, for example, from the United States will know. When I go over to the UK, I hear people talking and I sometimes think, what the heck are they talking about? They're referencing something culturally that I don't know. And the more I learn about the UK and the culture and watch movies and hear about the news and have conversations, the more I start to get. My whole goal is to give you guys, and by guys I mean all of you, I want to give you more of that. I want to give you immersion because there isn't a line between all of this stuff. And the fact that you're able to understand maybe me but not someone else's because you don't have those cultural references. If you want to go without the references, be my guest. But uh, it's just not the way I like to teach. Uh, Mono Romero, yeah, I have a Twitch. Actually, we're live on Twitch right now as well. Do I like playing video games? I do, Oscar. I'm playing uh, right now. I'm playing several games at the same time. My wife and I are playing Diablo 3. Uh, we just finished It Takes Two, which is a great co-op game um i'm also i also play quite a bit of uh, call of duty right now i'm playing a lot of call of duty black ops sort of sometimes i like to just listen to an audio book and play call of duty black ops uh, multiplayer um i am also playing uh, very slowly very 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 slowly playing um elden ring i'm not sure how i feel about it um it's beautiful I'm playing Elden Ring on PlayStation 5, and it looks amazing. It's so beautiful. But I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. What are the quests? Uh, where do I get the quests? Who? I'm just running around, and then everybody's bad. Everyone, there's no, I can't run across a nice little doggy. All the dogs attack me too. So I just feel so, I feel lonely when I play that game, and I feel alone. I feel like no one's helping me. No one cares about me. There's no safe little camp. Uh, it's just, uh, it makes me sad and it makes me depressed. But at the same time, I think, well, everything's so beautiful. But the, the, even the little doggies are attacking me and I don't know what to do next. <laughs> it's, what do I do? I know that people who play Souls games think that, you know, that's what I'm saying is stupid. But it's my first game in this family of games called I think Souls games and it scares me and it makes me sad but I'm still playing it <laughs> yeah um, what do you say about phrasal verbs hard life phrasal verbs are very very important but there are so many of them thank you Mahmood I appreciate that I was just trying to express my feeling about your comment I wasn't saying, uh, you know, you shouldn't watch. I appreciate that you're here. I think it's great. I, I appreciate you for being here. Uh, and you're free to express how you feel about the live shows that we do. Um, you know, it's all just a, it's a conversation back and forth. So use the word run across. What does that mean? Uh, run across means it's sort of like encounter or find or meet by accident. Yeah. Well, guys, I have some guests visiting this evening. It is 2.30 p.m., and they will be here at around 5, I think. And they are coming over to our house. Um, so we have to do a bit of, uh, bit of cleaning up, a bit of housework, and also make dinner. So we have to go to the supermarket and get some, what are we having, salmon, I think and uh, maybe some some veggies, some, I don't know what we need to get, but we need to get some, I need, we need to go to the supermarket, my wife and I go to the supermarket, get some stuff, including salmon, maybe lobster as well, bring it back, think about how we're going to cook it, 
uh, do some housework. I, I will vacuum the floors. It's my job. And so I got to go. I wanted to cover a couple other topics. Honestly, I wanted to talk about the Hammurabi Code, but maybe we can do that next time. Also wanted to get to some Reddit questions next time. So next Wednesday, I hope you can join. Bring your questions. I love to hear the questions. You guys have some great questions. If I didn't answer them, I apologize. But I, it's fantastic that you're here. We do these every Wednesday and Friday. I have ever since I said I will do them on Wednesday and Friday. Not missed one, although I'm a little bit late sometimes. And I want to get better at that. Um, amazingly, in this last hour and 45 minutes, I've only had half of my coffee. Unbelievable. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I would deeply appreciate you subscribing and also hitting the like button. That helps too. Feel free to share if you want to. I mean, if you want to, why not? And check out the courses. Again, there's a free one hour course that you can take. That's in the link in the description. And, uh, and then this limited time building your English brain course, which is, uh, uh, I believe a top selling course worldwide. That's a claim. I don't have a lot of evidence to support it, but I really think so. And that is on sale at 70% off. So grab that. Why not? Invest in yourself. Invest in your English. I recommend it. In in Guatemala, it's 1230. Okay. All right. So we're a couple hours different. Uh, have you tried Vietnamese food? I eat Vietnamese food every week. There is a restaurant owned by a Vietnamese owner called Pho Tibet. And it's an interesting mix because they have half Vietnamese food and they have half Tibetan food, but it's mostly Vietnamese food because I believe the owner is from Vietnam and it's amazing, amazing pho. It's delicious, very authentic, authentic because I've had very authentic Vietnamese made by a Vietnamese friend pho before and it tastes the same. So it's great. Love Vietnamese food. Nom, nom, nom. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for joining everybody. I appreciate it. Have a great weekend and stay safe and uh, have some fun and uh, take care. And I hope to see you all next Wednesday.